Well, that's a weird thing that people do when they have tons of money. They buy things that are illegal. Like they buy like Egyptian artifacts and uh, stuff that was like uh, pilfered from Iraq. You know, that was a, a yeah, thing with yeah. artifacts, like Sumerian artifacts from Iraq. Like yeah. when uh, the fall of Iraq, once uh, Saddam Hussein went down, a lot of that stuff was like pilfered and stolen. One of my favorite stories when I was in Alexandria in Egypt and we were going on tours around... And there was a garbage man because there were just antiquities everywhere. It's they're like in everyone's backyard in Egypt. It's just stuff you find when you dig. And the, it's a, it was like a, a, a burial site with tons of mummies in it. And that's what we were looking at. But the story is this guy who was a garbage man was taking the mummies out and he was selling them on the black market for mm. uh, underneath all the garbage. And he got busted in his 80s. Because they were like, how is this garbage man <laughs> like worth millions of dollars? <laughs> like, he got extremely wealthy. And it turns out he was on top of a whole, like, it was this whole, I don't know how many mummies were in there. It was cra- it's a funny, it's just like one of those stories that stuck out to me. How bizarre would it be to go over someone's house and they have a mummy? And that's a crime. You know, that's oh, in yeah. Egypt. You can't, like, they don't want their antiquities leaving Egypt. They've lost enough. Well, they've lost so much. That's what's so fucked in terms of Egypt. Egyptian history is that so many of those tombs have been raided over the years and long, long ago to the point where you're never going to find that stuff. And who knows where it is now? Who knows what it, whether it's been melted down, the gold's been melted down. I just wrote about this when I was in Egypt and I was staying in Luxor and it's right across from the Valley of the Kings. And I had like, the it was one of the writing prompts and the question was, do you believe in reincarnation? And I was, I was like, I think I had like a past life regression in Egypt. But it was crazy. Just the, Egypt is nuts. Have you been there? No, I haven't. Uh, it's, it, we went, I went right after the revolution. So it was empty. So there was, it was almost like getting a private tour of this place that's generally filled with tourists. We had no line to see King Tut, no line to see, to go into the Great Pyramids, it was it was like on our cruise down the Nile. There were supposed to be, I think, a hundred and so, some odd people on the cruise, and there were fourteen of us. People were like, "Why are you here?" Because it was right post that rev- the Arab Spring. Oh my god! And it was right after they had voted, so they all had their purple stamp on their finger, and there was all this optimism. And it was before they realized that you know it all kind of went back to normal, and they had to choose between two. Um. What is this, Jamie? I've never heard of any of these things. I, I found something that said they had unwrapping parties in Victorian times. Oh. So I Googled mummy unwrapping parties and then stumbled across, why did people start eating mummies? Ew. What? So they would not only unwrap illnesses? them, they would eat them because oh they my thought that God. it would cure stuff. What? What? The royal and social elite eating mummy seemed a royally appropriate medicine, as doctors claim mumia, M-U-M-I-A, was made from pharaohs. Royalty ate royalty. Oh, my God. <laughs> By the 19th century, people were no this longer consuming most... mummies to cure illnesses, but Victorians were hosting unwrapping parties where Egyptian corpses would be unwrapped for entertainment at private parties. <laughs> This Napoleon's a- first exhibition into Egypt in 1798 piqued European curiosity and allowed 19th century travelers to Egypt to bring whole mummies back to Europe, brought off the street in Egypt. Yeah, they recently found one in someone's attic in England. That's how I, I Look at the picture. Scroll that. Look at that fucking picture. Oh, God. It's so bizarre. This is the most rich person shit I've ever heard. Mm, God, that's so creepy. <laughs> that's so creepy. Yeah. So, that's <laughs> Dinner, drinks, and a show. Yeah. We're going to unwrap the mummy after cocktails. And eat it. And they found a head in someone's attic recently. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, else, because yeah, there was like that. a real big <laughs> Egyptian kind of fetish that was happening during when they were, when they opened up to going into Egypt and exploring. And it became kind of all the rage. And I think in like European culture, they be, they became all obsessed with it when you went there um how many days did you spend god i was there two over a little over two weeks wow yeah it was amazing i i we we did i kind of we started in cairo and then stayed right by the pyramids and sasakara we went down to luxor took a 
there's tons to see in Luxor. Took a Nile cruise, which I would do again in a heartbeat. It was amazing. And you just kind of float down the Nile and then stop. And there are all these amazing artifacts that you stop and see and take get off. And um, then we stopped. Uh, we went to Nubia and then flew down and saw um, the big, oh, I'm blanking, the big Ramses. Mm. Um, they're huge. What's the, the name of it? It's um, South. And then flew back and went to Alexandria, which I loved. There's just something very cosmopolitan about Alexandria. And we were with a bunch of locals. My One of my mentors in Cairo was um, Henny, rest in peace. He, he was an artist and had all these young art students who lived in Alexandria. And they took us out and we played dominoes and like the Egyptian dominoes and the drinking tea and went to this amazing Mediterranean restaurant and ate. There's just so much history there. It's it's so wild. And just the uh, Alexandria feels like one of those cities that's just been burned to the ground. And it's like Barcelona it in that way. Yeah, it And was. the crossroads of all the cultures mixing. It was, it, it's, yeah, it was, I definitely felt the most uh, like oppressed as a, you know, you have to cover up as a woman and keep a scarf on. And mm. when you're going into certain places and you feel that, that, true kind of patriarchal society that exists was it that way at the pyramids um yeah i mean it, it's it's just in the air you know it's it wasn't like it was more so i think when we got into the smaller towns and than it was in like the bigger city cairo is nuts cairo is madness the trap people it people will it's like la traffic it's just but crazy people are driving everywhere it feels very at that point, too, there was no one really in charge, so it felt very crazy and lawless and in and, and Egypt at that time. It was